Hey, how are you doing? Well, in this video today, I thought I'd share with you how I get inspired uh, and how I decide what project to sew next. So if you're like me and sometimes you lose a bit of um, mojo with regards to sewing, I like to sometimes browse the web, find my favourite shops online and use those as a kind of inspiration to find my next make. Now one of my favourite online shops is Bowden and I know you agree too because I, I asked you all a little while ago on my community tab to vote on the type of shop that you quite like to sew in the style of. So here are a few inspirations that got me thinking. Now this method for me is really great because you do get to the bottom of what you actually need to sew for your wardrobe. So go window shopping in your favourite shops either in the high street or online and choose something that you would like to buy. Lots of the things on Bowdoin are quite expensive. A couple of the tops and tunics that I saw were nearly £100 so I thought oh um, I could make that myself. I know we don't all sew to save money, it's not a cheap hobby is it? Um, but it is quite nice to think you've got something unique in your wardrobe in the style of the things that you go out and buy anyway. This method works for me because sometimes I look at the patterns in my stash and I think well I'm not that inspired by them. So I kind of flip it on its head and I think oh I'd like to make that I've got the perfect fabric and let me now go and find a pattern that will get as close to that as I can uh, and adapt it to suit me. So let's have a look first at what my inspirations were and then I'll go through what I'm wearing. The first pattern that jumped out at me was this beautiful yellow maxi skirt and that's kind of what inspired my fabric purchase for my top. It also comes in these lovely prints and you can probably guess why I was drawn to them. It's very me, this type of print. Even a classic black and white one, I thought it would be fab. The pattern I've bought to match that one is Simplicity 1110. And this is a really easy to sew skirt with an elasticated waist too, so extra comfort. There were a few simple jersey tops as well that caught my eye. This reminded me of the Sew Over It Edie top which I've made in the past. Also next, this top reminded me of the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top and it would be quite easy to recreate that collar. I loved this simple tee. Just by using different colour sleeves and neckband you can create something quite designer focused. And look at the price, £60, that would be quite easy to recreate. This dress is what really inspired my tunic. I loved the neckline. I loved how it was loose fitting yet still chic. This was a stunning version. Um, I really fancied making a longer one of these tunics. And also the smocked cuff as well. So if you've seen the sewing bee recently, you've seen lots of shirring. That would be a nice way to practice your shirring on the very end of those sleeves. I spotted a couple of patterns on Stylark too that would try and recreate some of those looks. The Kent woven tunic and also the Anita peasant blouse could all be adapted to look like something from Bowdoin. I loved the idea of this simple woven tee as well. There are plenty of patterns that you could make this from. And finally I absolutely fell in love with these two linen dresses that I found. Um, really beautiful. I'd have to hack the pattern that I make um, in a second I'll show you to recreate this but it wouldn't be too difficult. I mean look at the price too, £110 for that one. I'd be a great project to recreate. So uh, as you know I love tunics so I wanted a tunic or a few actually to take with me on my holiday. Uh, as you may know from past videos I like to try and sew myself something before my Greek holiday soon and um, I found the perfect pattern that will work across the seasons and also is perfect for hot weather. So the pattern I landed on is New Look 6374. Now, as is often the case with um, the mainstream patterns, the, the picture on the front isn't that inspiring to me. It's a little bit, mm, it's a little bit maybe 
a bit stiff you know it could be doesn't look too modern it certainly doesn't look Bowden so I thought well I love a tunic because I like to wear leggings or I like to wear shorts in summer so I thought I can adapt that and make it a little bit more me and this is what I'm wearing so I made view I have to think about this because I swapped the sleeves around I made view a with view D sleeves and that's the best thing about these isn't it you can chop and change so here we go it's a tunic it's got a very slight high low hem which I love because um, it's a bum cover <laughs> and it's got sleeves with a little cuff on but a loose one it's not tight it's got this gorgeous placket neckline now this is, I didn't change this version, this is how it comes, very low, too low for most people and in the pattern it suggests you put a, a sewing line there to make it decent. It could have probably gone a little bit higher actually but I, I kind of guessed. Um, and then it's got a few gathers here before the little shoulder pieces and then at the back it's got this fantastic um, vent. Now the best thing about that is if you look it makes it skim over your hips so it creates that little bit of extra bulk here that then allows it to sit tight so if this didn't have that it might sit a bit more clingy to the hips which is not good for us girls is it? <laughs> unless you're blessed with a size six figure. So I loved this. I made this in this fantastic cotton mix fabric, which is lovely for summer. Um, it's almost like a very, very fine linen. So it's kind of a cross between a cotton and a viscose mix. Um, and it's in this fantastic print. I don't actually think this color suits my coloring. Um, it's one of those Marmite colors, isn't it? You either love it or hate it. But I was so in love with the pattern um, that I, I made it anyway and I thought what the heck it's summery and we all need cheering up don't we with something bright and sun coloured so yeah I, uh, I went with this kind of mustard colour so yeah it's absolutely lovely I made it slightly larger than I need um, so that I'm not clinging um, with the heat and if I want to wear it on the beach as a bikini cover-up it's great for that. I can still walk down to the beach with my bag and my flip-flops for the day and it, it's nice and easy to get off and on when you're covered in sun cream and, and so on. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Let's go through the pattern and what I thought of it. So as I mentioned before, I made view A with the sleeves from view D. Um, it, there's nothing difficult about this and, and in this fabric, the extra layers on the placket are pretty easy. So great fabrics for this top are viscose, very light cotton. I think that will help you. I've also made another version, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, now, because the, the neck is quite deep, you may want to shorten the placket, which I did on my next version. Um, it's quite simple to do. You literally just shorten the pattern piece and remember to change the dots where you have to line it up on the top front. Now I haven't made a, a placket neckline for a while so I needed to refresh on the technique for that. The instructions as is often the case with these types of patterns aren't brilliant so rather than sit there scratching your head I always go to YouTube and see if anybody's done a tutorial on that particular part of a neckline. It doesn't have to be for the same pattern, you could just take it from another uh, top. And I really love these necklines. A lot of clothes uh, that I have in my wardrobe ready to wear have this neck. It, it's great because there's no closures, there's no buttons, there's no zips, it's just straight off um, and on. So uh, the best tutorial I found for this section was by Angela Wolf, and she's actually making uh, this neckline on one of her patterns which is pretty similar actually and she goes through a really simple close-up way of attaching these bits and I'm really pleased how it turned out it's really neat and for a first attempt in a long time 
I'm chuffed to bits with it. One tip for you is to make the neck band piece slightly longer than the pattern says. And the reason for that is only slightly though. Um, when I made uh, the second version of this, I did notice that the neck piece wasn't long enough. And that's okay. Um, it was tempting to cut a longer piece, but if you do that, you'll end up with a baggy, baggier neck. So remember, this is this length for a reason, to sit nice and neatly here. And because there's no closures, you don't want it too baggy. So try and get your neck band piece as close to you can, as you can, but a centimetre or so longer won't hurt because you can always trim it off when you sew it on. Let's have a look at my other version. And here she is. Um, this is a sleeveless version. I wanted something um, for very hot days that skims on the top. Um, the same length is the high-low hem. Can you just see that there? It's beautifully drapey. This is made from uh, a gorgeous double gauze. If you've never sewn with double gauze, I really recommend it. If you want to use something light in place of linen, this is your guy. Um, it's so easy to sew, it's a woven fabric, it's very light, um, it's got that kind of seersucker dappled finish, so you don't have to go mad with the iron, preferably if, uh, if you don't iron it as well, just kind of steam it. And also, you probably can't see this too close up, but it's got little gold dots, um, which I think is very, very summery, very south of France, darling. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. I had to, when you take a pattern um, that goes from sleeved to sleeveless, you do have to take in a little bit off the armhole, which I did. I think it says that somewhere in here, but I couldn't find it again to point it out to you. But yeah, and also I had to take in uh, the armhole a little bit more here. It just was a simple pinch. So just try it on and work out where that is. It will stop it gaping. So the arm's finished um, on here with a very tiny hem turning over twice. So I overlocked once and then turned over twice. Helps if you iron it first, but go careful with this fabric because it will stretch. So treat it very gently. Um, the hem, I just turned over, see if I can show you. I turned over once so um, I overlocked and then literally just created a very small hem and I like the way it hangs when you do that it's got a kind of not a lettucey hem but a kind of a flowy less bulky hem now this fabric although it feels very light is actually a, a little bit thicker than you might think so a tip for this is on the neck piece um, the pattern suggests you um, apply facing to both pieces and that's fine you can and that's what I did here and it's still very very fine and a very neat slim finish I think it's a little bit bulkier on this fabric so if I were to make this again I just apply interfacing the iron-on interfacing to one part of the neck rather than both sides and I think that will lessen the bulk. It's not too bad though as you can see I'm quite happy with it I'm just really being fussy. You'll notice here from the neck that I did shorten the placket size and that negated um, the necessity to have the little sew bar tack on which I'm not a massive fan of. I think it feels a little bit I don't know I'd, I'd rather have a button there I think um, but that's what the pattern suggested I have a ready-to-wear top here that I live in which is pretty similar and this top seems to have a similar approach you can't see because the fabrics quite busy but you can just see here this one crosses one over the other totally and then sews a little bar in place so it's always handy to have a look at what you've got already in your wardrobe and kind of adapt and copy some of the techniques there. Now, fabric wise for this top, as I mentioned, something light's really uh, working well here. 
uh, double gauze. I stock all these by the way, I've got plenty of these in. This is the last of the bright white double gauze, but I have this in an ivory just sat behind me, which is a beautiful colour. Again, it gives it that kind of linen vibe. I'd make a beautiful dress too. I actually wanted to make this um, with sleeves and I was going to try and do um, kind of a fluted sleeve hem which is popular everywhere at the moment and that was inspired by the Bowdoin picture of that linen dress that I showed you earlier. I really would like to recreate that properly um, but alas this was the very last of the bright white um, double gauze so maybe I'll do it again. I've also got this in a navy blue and I'll show you some other fabrics as well that would work well. This just came in yesterday and I'm itching to make another version in this. This is a really beautiful viscose. It's dark navy on the, the back and you can see this beautiful um, floral print, very summery, beautiful drape and this would work well in lots of different patterns. So I've got some of this in stock. Um, this is called the Garden Blooms Viscose. So you can find that on my website and I'll put all the links below if you need any. Here's another cotton viscose, which is great for this time of year. And this is a lovely tribal pattern in this really unusual emerald green with kind of a, a sunset style um, orange pattern on the front. I love this. This would be perfect for a beach caftan. Um, you could also make some wraps for this, cover-ups for your bikini. So yeah, really quite different. It would make a nice uh, woven t-shirt top as well. Um, yeah, really love this one. And it's that time of year for the uh, batiks or batik, however you pronounce it, I still have no idea. Um, this is an Indian printed fabric and it's made obviously in India and they take um, a printing block and in this case it's this beautiful elephant print and then it's repeated by hand. These are stunning quality. Um, really lovely for the beach as well. This is just begging to be made into a beach caftan uh, or a tunic. So yeah, I really love these ones. I've got a similar one in red as well, uh, which I'll show you on the screen now. But yeah, always take care with washing these because they're quite uh, heavily dyed. So always make sure you wash all your fabric first anyway, and then it will avoid shrinkage. Another new fabric, which I haven't stopped before, is this beautiful tumbled cotton and you can see it's a really lovely lightweight summer fabric it's a little bit feels like a seersucker where you've got that kind of texture but it's absolutely beautiful this would be gorgeous to sew if you want something a little bit easier to sew than viscose I know I see on lots of Facebook groups people really struggle with sewing viscose but I don't find it a problem as long as you just take your time. It's like anything. It can slip around, but just try not to overpress it. Use lots of pins and just go slow and just take your time with it rather than rush to get through it. Yeah, it's not as easy as a, a pure cotton, but I do find it's not too bad if you, if you just give it a go. Don't be too scared of it. And it also comes in yellow as well, which is gorgeous. I mean, you couldn't fail to smile when you're wearing that on a sunny day, could you? Just beautiful. We'd make a lovely maxi skirt too, like the one I showed you earlier on the Bowden site. Um, it's one of the reasons this fabric inspired me um, to buy it uh, when I saw that maxi skirt. I was going to make that first, but I actually needed tunics more. So maybe I will. I think this would work really well with a, a gorgeous wide tan belt at the top. I know it's a bit 90s, but hey. <laughs> that was my era. Whoops, one of my other fabrics has uh, <laughs> fallen to the ground. I'll show you which one. There you go. Now, if you're not into your florals, but you like something a little bit more geometric, this is gorgeous. It's just one of those classic prints, isn't it? This is a viscose poplin, which is a very fine um, cotton, is poplin. Um, the word poplin originated from the association with the Pope and fabric made for him. That's where it came from, apparently. So my fabric agent tells me. Um, yeah, this will be really beautiful in loads of different things, blouses, tops, 
skirts, dresses, wrap dresses, it would drape beautifully well. Um, and it's lovely and robust. So yeah, feels a little bit finer than a normal viscose. So there you go, I hope that's given you a few ideas as to how I go about trying to give myself a little bit of inspiration. Um, because I would never have bought this pattern otherwise. So it's, it's sort of a different focus when you can choose the garment you fancy making first, then seek out the pattern. I'm sure lots of you will do that all the time, but not for me. I tend to get um, starry eyed at the latest pattern releases from the companies that I like to follow and then try and make that fit into my wardrobe when maybe we should look at what we actually need um, or what we'd actually buy if we went shopping today. And inspiration can strike anywhere. I, I shop in my local supermarket and they've got some wonderful fashion forward clothes in there and I'm often inspired even though you know it's at the cheaper end rather than the Bowdens. I think yeah I get that. So you can start seeing well tear dresses are still in and um, smock dresses are still in and you know you can get a an idea. I tend not to follow too much fashion though but if you wanted that kind of inspiration you could really go all out and recreate the latest Chanel piece if you wanted to. Um, that's lots of fun. Uh, but yeah I'm quite happy just making something easy and breezy to wear to get me through the summer months. I hope that was useful. It's lovely to see you again. I know I, I leave it ages between videos but it's just so busy for me doing everything myself from the website to the film into the edit to the getting your orders out um, all at once so forgive me. My next video is going to be how to make a uh, quick and easy bunting for the summer and that's always handy isn't it whether you're having garden parties or birthdays um, I'll show you how I make mine. Anyway, lovely to see you. You take care. Bye for now.